and the close timeness is increasing. Increasing. That that means that a lot of people are getting comfortable. Uh, you know, those to me, I, you know, the certain eyes going around that hey, this might be a little close. We're getting a little close to something. Okay. Now, how do we know these? We know the things because what we've been doing. You have to study yourself. You can't pretend like, oh, we're just talking. No. You have to keep score. And we keep score. We keep a record of what we're doing, what we're talking about, and we've been doing it all along so that we know what's the level of accuracy. You know, I mean, what's the score? I mean, how are we doing? When you look on the board, you want to see how are we doing? Where are we at in this game? What do we have to do to catch up? Right? What do we have to do to catch up? Or what do we have to do to maintain our lead? Right? Whatever the score is, it's telling you. And we have to keep score on this whole thing. And so with that in mind, we look at a lot of the things that are happening in, in the world today. Back to last week. Last week, uh, yeah, since this is Sunday. Last week, Iran had a, a, a multilateral, multi-country uh, program in Tehran. I think it was six nations, including China and Russia, or along with them. But I know Tajikistan, Kajiristan, all of them guys was there, and Pakistan and Iran. And it was brilliant. What made it brilliant? It was brilliant because they was coming together. Iran brought everybody together. So let's work on this as a collective. So whatever is going on, we're not dealing with this by ourselves. We all, everybody around here is going to be a part of this, right? It was wonderful. They worked out some things that they wanted to do, and it, it was a win. It was a win just to have the meeting. Now, first, the Rahba said weeks ago that we have to get, be careful about, well, we kind of said it first. They left those weapons behind for some reason. They're killing people in Shia Masajid for some reason. It's not even a thought thing. You've got to figure out what they're trying to do. Iran put a freeze on that. It's a freeze on that. The Rahba told them a, a month ago when it happened, but now the freeze is on. Everybody is involved. It's not like, okay, you're going to start a war with us. No, everybody is involved. In that whole region, the whole region, that was, that means to me, when I see that, I said, boy, our homeboys is on a roll. When we look at Lebanon, and we look at the Hezbollah flags and these trucks rolling in by the, what, full of fuel and what have you, we see, right, that they on a the roll. They are an ally of the Islamic Republic. And that means their ally is giving them, sending it to Syria, and it's coming right across the land, you know, to... Uh, to help the people. And the people see that, you know, we talked about Kardan Hassanan, loan to Allah, beautiful loan. They have a thing in Saudi Arabia called that. There was from Lebanon. They just put a flag on it the other day and said, uh, we, uh, we're closing that down. Lebanon, we're closing that down. Not only they they kidnapped the last year, year before last the Lebanese uh, prime minister or head of the Lebanon, 
you know, and kept him in Saudi Arabia for two weeks. These people are ridiculous. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I mean, look, we always pray to oh, Allah bring this foolishness out and put it on. But I mean, this is like, hey, this is like, hey, I'm telling you, it's unbelievable. So everything is happening except one or two things, but we can't be like, oh, you guys got to do this, that, and another. No. Uh, there's things like airlifts that are still, uh, but they're doing what they can on land and everything, right? Okay. Blockade running for Yemen. A lot of things is happening. But we can't demand of people that are doing a good job, but a position they're in. Remember, all of the stuff they're doing while they're under attack. That's why to, there's a time in history when those heavy attacks are healthy for the country. Because it builds up their resistance and everything. They build up their institutions. They say, oh, no, we're going to build up this, that, and other because uh, when we needed help, y'all just let Saddam come in and do anything he want. So you can't tell us don't build no what's the names because uh, we'll look out for you. You ain't looked out for us and nobody else, right? So the Islamic Republic, that the pressure they are under is healthy for them. What we deal with in the United States is healthy for us. It's very, very healthy. Nobody else would look at that like that. Nobody else looks at Iran like that hardly. The people say, they've been telling Iran for years in, in the UN, man, if they hit us with one of the things, one of the 15 or 20 things they didn't hit y'all with, we would have been crushed with just one of them. But then they ease on back. I ain't said nothing. Don't, 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 you know, don't send me no letter. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. But everybody is watching. All the things that we have visualized happening are happening because we're under unbelievable attack here in the United States. Surveillance 24-7 plus da-da-da-da-da and it ain't bothering us at all. It's not having no effect. Here's why. Number one, we're, we're studying our situation. And also, we're influencing our environment because leadership have to deal with, let's say, environmental circumstances. How the leadership deal with the environmental circumstances has a lot to do with the, uh, the goals and the objectives and the things that have to be dealt with. That's one of the things of leadership. And they have certain leaderships that uh, a certain time, a certain type of leadership is needed, you know. And there's other times when a certain balance, the characteristics of leadership are always similar, but there are certain weights and measures that have to be applied or could be applied or should be applied at different times. In America, we're doing our part. Uh, we're doing a, a, a excellent part, a, and that's not bragging to ourselves. That's just like we measure Iran and all other. We have to also measure ourselves. You know, okay. We have to look at how many people are on our team. What's our environment here? You just have to do it. I mean, you don't. Have to, okay. So we come up with certain conclusions. How are we acting within the environment that's presented to us? 
so you remember, we don't have control over most of the environmental realities that we encounter. Right? So, we have to do our own process of developing <clears throat> the type of environment where we can, or developing the characteristics that are suitable for us to do in our time and in the place, time, place, and circumstances. Right? Where are we at now? Right? So then, the leadership could develop uh, a, a static, uh, non-flexible leadership pattern. They could uh, include in that reactionary behavior where they react to like, remember, shaping and hurting, they, how they do all of the big Muslim leadership here. They do something to them, they react. They're reactionary. They move over here. Then they do something else and they move over there. Pretty soon, they're being controlled by the system. What they do to them, what they say in the news, all those things have a... 99, well, let's just give them a break, a 90% relationship to how they behave, what they say in their programs, what speakers they bring to speak and talk about, right? That means their behavior is being shaped by what their enemy is do to them, doing to them, and then they're being herded, just like cattle, down a certain path. Because the leadership they're going to bring to them are going to be the, not Uncle Tom's and all of that, but that type of personality that tell them and keep them going in that way. Why? Because those people are created and made by them. They come from their universities. Some of their best speakers come from American University over here. If they need a, a troubleshooter in Oakland, when we're out there, they send them out there to hang around with maybe Hamza Yusuf or something, help him out. When that period is over, he goes back to wherever, right? When they need somebody to go against the presentation that we're making, they may send Daoud somebody from somewhere. You know, the, we call him the bitter man. And this goes back 25 years ago, at least. That's, that's about 25 years ago when the... The bitter man come rolling in. This is bitter, that's bitter. And everybody gravitated to them. Like this is the new thing. Okay? So since everybody, it, they didn't just jump up and gravitate. They were programmed to gravitate. We have to understand that the Islamic movement in America is controlled by a boss man. And now the Zionists. Full, I mean, really controlled. Boss man, say, maybe running 25% of stuff like that. But the main thing, the Zionists are in control of uh, the American political system, right? The black movement in America. Remember we went down and we was talking and they had that big sign in the street, Black Lives Matter stuff. And we gave a little program. And the Black Lives Matter people walked right by us and went out. They didn't even stop and say hi. They didn't even stop and say hi. As though somebody told them and somebody selected them as leaders. Most of them was girls and most of them were young and they didn't have any background on anything. And every time we went down there, we did teach-ins, explaining to the people this is what we did in the past. This is what would be helpful. I would think that everything we told them was good. It would have helped them. They didn't want to hear it. They never came and stopped and listened. and, and Nothing, right? And our friends overseas, when we came out with the first two programs, they was trying to 
coax us to do this and do that. And after, you know, we came on with the crowds in the background and we said we want to thank the people of the Islamic Republic because da 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 After a while, what happened? Well, things was up in the air, finished, right? And they send people over here to tell us, uh, don't you think that this is what's really happening? I said, that ain't what's happening. No, sir. Mm -mm. And I uh, sit right there at that park right there. Over there. You know, we was sitting in that park. I said, let's go around there and talk. The brother came back from Iran, one of the ones that I know real well. And after I continued to say what I was saying, he closed up the notebook and stopped taking notes. You know, and the people on the cameras right here, they just 